there is a very clear pattern here. And, and I, you know, people say, well, Fred, you know, there's, this is just drawing lines of the, you know, uh, drawing lines of the uh, graph. And I'm like, no, it is not like, we're, we're, this is something that is, you know, I, I've never seen data like this in my life before. Okay. And I've looked at tons and tons and tons of data, uh, you know, for stock prices, bond prices, commodity prices, you know, I, I've studied all these things. I've never seen a power law like big. It does, this is very, very unusual, right? Wait a minute, everyone. We all agree that the crypto market never sleeps, but with countless newsletters out there, how do you choose the best one for you? Bitcoin Zella stands out with its simplicity and clarity. We've crafted an experience that anyone can dive into, whether you're a crypto expert or just a new to the crypto world. Now guess who keeps his eye on us? The author of best-selling book Rich Dad Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki. And we want to take this opportunity and thank all the people who trusted us, and we read every comment, and the best part, it's free. Subscribing now means you will get all new information for free. Don't just follow the trends, stay ahead of them. Subscribe to Bitcoin Zella today and enjoy the new edge. In today's video, Fred Kruger talks about why he is a big advocate of the Bitcoin power law model, a pricing model that forecasts Bitcoin's future price as if the laws of physics bound it. The Bitcoin power law model predicts that we will see Bitcoin hit a cycle peak of between $200,000 and $250,000 by the middle to the end of 2025. It then predicts we will see a $1 million Bitcoin by the end of 2032, and if the model is accurate, it predicts Bitcoin will go up by a factor 64x over the next 15 years. This would put one Bitcoin at $4.5 million per coin. So without wasting any time, let's dive into the video. A three-month period of chopping around is 100% normal. It doesn't matter. It's like it, it completely normal. Um, so I don't think anything of what we're in right now. I, I have no opinion whatsoever. And in sort of in general, one thing I've realized is I have no opinion on what Bitcoin's going to do over the next month. Zero. You know, like, you know, I, I sort of said, you know, I, I like to look at the, like, I'm, I'm, I'm like a monkey like everybody else. I, I click, you know, refresh, you know, 50 times a day. But realistically, do I have any idea what Bitcoin's going to do tomorrow? No. Do I have any idea what Bitcoin's going to do next month? No. Do I even have any idea what Bitcoin's going to do next year? think a little bit in the next year, probably a little bit, but you know, over the next two to four to five years. Yeah. I think I have a, I have a pretty good opinion there. Right. And I think the power law helps quantify that a little bit, you know, but I look, we do not have magic wands. as just to see where this stuff's going. We, we really don't. And I think as a guy who was, you know, trading professionally for, for years, I will say Bitcoin is even more inscrutable than almost any other thing I've traded. It, you know, it goes up exactly when you don't expect it to go up. You know, like when you're completely convinced it's going down, that, that's when it's going to go up, <laughs> you know, or when you're completely convinced that it should be going up, then it's going to go down or it's going to stay sideways. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really, really hard to predict Bitcoin. And I think, you know, part of the, 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 the growth pattern here of, of being a Bitcoiner is, is understanding that, right? It's understanding you will not have the ability to predict this thing. So if you're sitting there trying to trade this thing, leverage long or anything, I, I really don't think you're doing yourself a, a, a favor by, by trying to, you know, try to predict it. I, I don't think you're going to be successful and, I don't think that's a great way to make money. That's my opinion. Donald Trump is covering all his bases to pull in the crypto crowd. This time around, he has turned to championing Bitcoin mining, not just in Washington, D.C., but also internationally. In a recent meeting with industry players, the Republican presidential candidate said he aims for all remaining Bitcoin to be mined in the U.S., a move he believes will contribute to the country's energy dominance. In his latest post on the social media platform Truth Social, Trump said, Bitcoin mining may be our last line of defense against the CBDC. Biden's hatred of Bitcoin only helps China, Russia, and the radical communist left. We want all the remaining Bitcoin to be made in the USA. It will help us be energy dominant. With the latest push,
Trump essentially aims to boost the U.S. share of Bitcoin's network hash rate, which is currently at 38%, according to the latest data by Chain Bulletin. Trailing behind is China at 21%, followed by Canada at 6.5%. The cryptocurrency industry is increasingly seeking to influence U.S. politicians as it faces heightened regulatory scrutiny. While the approval of spot Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF were significant milestones, Trump is pulling out big guns to sway voters in his favor. In recent months, Trump has resorted to using cryptocurrency as his latest tool to target the Biden administration. The dramatic shift in opinion on the matter is now a major issue in the upcoming presidential race. Last month, Trump promised that Bitcoin would prosper in the U.S. under his leadership while speaking at the Libertarian National Convention in Washington, D.C. He also vowed to protect the rights of crypto holders to self-custody, while keeping critics like Elizabeth Warren away from their assets. He also opposed the creation of a central bank digital currency. The latest polls indicate that Trump is currently leading Biden by a slim margin, holding 40.9% of voter support compared to Biden's 40%. Meanwhile, independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. maintained a little over 9% of voter support. And that one I remember very well, right? But like 2017, if you, it, it went up, it started the year at 1,000, but then it really never got much below 6,000 for most of the year, okay? And then very, at the very end of the year, it suddenly broke 10,000. I want to say it was, just without looking, I want to say it was like September, October again. And then it, you know, or maybe it was even later. And then, and then finally, it broke through, and it hit almost twenty thousand. But that move from ten to twenty, actually, that move was only uh, one month. You know, Crazy. so really, really, this thing happened in just the end of twenty uh, seventeen. And then the other big move was in um, the you know, the other big move was in. 2020, early 2021, right? And again, that was really October of 2020 <laughs> to January of 2021. And then that was that. And again, after those three months, it's over. The, the, the people talk about the cycles, but it's not. It's not capturing the cycle. It's capturing the bull market during the cycle, right? Like so, if you're out, let's just say you're out. Let's just say in 2020, you were not convinced that Bitcoin was a good deal. Right. And let's say you missed two months out of the three months of that thing. Well, you're not going to, you, instead of getting involved at 10,000, you were going to get involved at 45,000 just literally by missing 30 days. Right. <laughs> and, and then you're going to be like, well, okay, I got involved at 45,000, went to 60,000. I made a little bit of money. So, well, my point is you have to be so careful because the danger here is. If you're out, if you miss those critical moments, uh, you're gonna you you'll have you actually will have negative return. <laughs> Holding Bitcoin could be a negative return thing. So you have to, and that's even before taxes. <laughs> so it's so, it's so dangerous to try to time this thing that you really, really should not do that. And and so that that's. You know, that, that's what I think just looking at this data very carefully tells you. Now, of course, you don't 100% know, is the future going to repeat the past? But you look at these power laws and stuff, and, and the future does seem to be very consistent with the past, right? There's there's definite patterns here. You know, this does not look like a random walk. You know, this this looks like there is a very clear pattern here, and, and I, you know, People say, well, Fred, you know, there's, this is just drawing lines on a, you know, a drawing lines on a, a graph. And I'm like, no, it is not. Like, we're, we're, this is something that is, you know, I, I've never seen data like this in my life before. Okay. And I've looked at tons and tons and tons of data, uh, you know, for stock prices, bond prices, commodity prices, you know, I, I've studied all these things. I've never seen a power law like big. It does, this is very, very unusual, right? In the ongoing debate of Bitcoin versus gold as a superior store of value, Jurian Timmer, director of Global Macro at Fidelity, has provided an analysis that sheds new light on this hot topic. According to Timmer, both assets are often viewed as hedges against fiscal dominance, where the government dilutes the value of money by increasing the money supply. 
He argues that this thesis is fundamentally sound, as sustained increases in the money supply typically lead to inflation. This correlation is evident when comparing the 10-year growth rate of the M2 money supply and the consumer price index. Timmer suggests that for Bitcoin and gold to truly solidify their roles as stores of value, there needs to be consistent above-trend growth in monetary aggregates. However, he notes that this has not yet occurred. The dramatic increase in real money massed during the pandemic was quickly reversed by the Federal Reserve's tightening policies, suggesting that the expected conditions for BTC to thrive as a competitive analog to gold have not yet been met. He also addresses the notion of cryptocurrency as gold 2.0, instead referring to it as exponential gold due to its combination of monetary properties and advanced network technology. The discussion that Bitcoin could overtake gold in market capitalization is not new and has been going on in the community since the cryptocurrency first became public knowledge. Not without reason, the first encrypted transaction was a Times headline about the global financial crisis. With the introduction of Spot Bitcoin ETF, this debate has only intensified as hundreds of millions of people can now buy the cryptocurrency in the traditional way. Currently, gold's market capitalization stands at over $15.6 trillion, while Bitcoin's is approximately $1.33 trillion. For the latter to match gold's market cap, it would need to grow by 11.72 times, reaching an estimated price of nearly $790,000 per BTC. And do not forget to subscribe to Bitcoin Zella. The most important news will reach your inbox on a daily basis and for free. I do not know why you have not subscribed yet. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power, and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing!